We start with special counsel Jack Smith taking a sledgehammer to one of the most brazen arguments being raised by the ex-president in any of his multiple legal travails. Over the course of just 12 pages, prosecutors pick apart the argument that Trump was somehow unfairly charged in the classified documents case. They say that although there have been many government officials who have possessed classified documents after the ends of their terms in office, often inadvertently, sometimes negligently, and very occasionally willfully, there has never been a case in American history in which a former official has engaged in conduct remotely similar to Trump. He intentionally took possession of a vast trove of some of the nation's most sensitive documents, documents so sensitive that they were presented to the president, and he stored them in unsecure locations at his heavily trafficked social club. But Trump did not stop there. The special counsel notes Trump, quote, delayed, obfuscated and dissembled committing crimes in order to stop the government from getting back its documents. Trump tried to get his attorney to lie to the Justice Department. Then Trump got his valet, Walt Nauta, to move the boxes so his attorney wouldn't find the classified documents. Then when the FBI asked for surveillance footage that would show the boxes being moved, Trump and Nauta got Trump's other co-defendant, Carlos de Oliveira, to try to delete the video. All of this is why Trump's case is nothing like President Joe Biden's, who was not charged for his handling of classified documents. DOJ saying this, quote, Trump, unlike Biden, is alleged to have engaged in extensive and repeated efforts to obstruct justice and thwart the return of documents bearing classification markings. And the evidence concerning the two men's intent, whether they knowingly possessed and willfully retained such documents, is also starkly different. The special counsel adds that Team Trump's claim that President Biden, quote, secretly directed the indictment of Donald Trump, that the special counsel is a, quote, puppet, is nothing more than an attempt to put the ex-president's warped Earth-2 conspiracies to paper. Quote, the sources on which they rely, even if taken at face value, undercut rather than support this conspiracy theory, as they repeatedly emphasize that the prosecutorial decisions made by the Department of Justice generally, and the special counsel specifically, have been made on the basis of the facts and the law not political considerations. The defendants offer no evidence to the contrary because there is no such evidence. Special counsel Jack Smith taking it upon himself to separate fact from fiction in the classified documents case is where we begin today with some of our favorite reporters and friends. National investigative reporter for the Washington Post, Carol Lennig, is here with us. With me at the table, NYU law professor and former clerk to Judge Sonia Sotomayor, Melissa Murray, is here. And former top prosecutor of the Department of Justice, Andrew Weissman, is back with us. They are the co-authors of a new book, The Trump Indictments. It's big. It's long. It's heavy. The historic charging documents with commentary. Um, Carol, let me start with you. It's so nice to see you, my friend. I, I want to dive into the substance of what's in here because it's juicy, but I want to start with the what of it. The what of it tells me that Jack Smith and his team are so acutely aware of the environment in which they are trying to hold Trump accountable for his crimes. Oh, it's so nice to see you. I can't believe how good and rested you look. I'm going to put aside <laughs> that my is, jealousy. That, that is the magic of the makeup room. <laughs> I'm going to put aside my jealousy about that for a minute and go right to the substance. Of course, you asked the laser right question. Think about, and I know you have, Nicole, how differently Jack Smith has stared down, uh, and, and this is no offense to, to who I'm about to reference, but how directly he has spoken to the public, uh, not in a namby-pamby way, but spoken to the court and the public about the the falsity, the, the, the profanity, the the brazen fallacies embedded in what Donald Trump is trying to say about the weaponization of the Department of Justice against him, and contrast that with how Robert Mueller um, addressed this issue. Jack Smith is taking this on the horns and deciding that it's appropriate for him to speak in court filings, but also it's appropriate for him to explain that this is a bunch of malarkey. I mean, I also found one of the most dramatic 
sort of passages here was when Smith said, there is no comparable person who engaged in, quote unquote, this complete suite of willful and deceitful actions to withhold classified information. The defendants cannot find somebody comparable who's not been prosecuted. They can't do it because there is no such person that exists. I'm, of course, paraphrasing yep. at the end. Remember the context of, of Jack Smith's probe. It does. It, of course, begins in November of 2022 when he is named special counsel. But he inherits the work of a team that for months has given former President Trump the most amazing pass. Please just give us the documents back. We see that you have some of the most sensitive documents that we've ever, ever, ever printed, special access programs that were so serious, people were not people who are national security prosecutors and agents and investigators were not read into the programs and not able to read the documents that we found. That's how serious this material yeah. was. But please just give everything back. And they wait and they beg and they plead. And then finally, after a subpoena and all tiny pittance of records are returned, they learn actually through the surveillance tape that a bunch of boxes have been moved and all of the things that you perfectly described before, all, all of these efforts at obstruction directed by Donald Trump himself uh, to withhold these documents was at play. Carol, I mean, it's so interesting you, 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 you pulled that out because I remember the night of the raid, the night of the court approved search, um, talking to se former senior DOJ and FBI officials and saying, what, what, how do you think we got here? And this person said to me, um, it had to be more than knowledge of his possession. They had to have gotten pissed that he didn't give them back. And I wonder if you can just, I mean, having, having, um, we're all, everyone assembled here has read volumes one and two of the Mueller report. I mean, having known the depth and really depravity of his obstructive acts in that probe, it seems that the obstructive acts in this one may be what sealed his fate. No, I'm really keen to hear what Melissa and Andrew have to say about this too. But I know from talking to sources who were involved in this at the time that there, that there were two stunner moments. The first stunner moment, obviously, is that there's special access program material that he's right. returned, and it's willy-nilly, not in folders, not protected, tossed in with articles and nondescript memos. This is not how we do things in the United States. And there is a recovery moment of, oh my gosh, could intel sources abroad be compromised? Could our in intelligence sharing programs be compromised or jeopardized? If anybody who wandered through Mar-a-Lago on the way to get a martini may have seen some of this material, right? There's there's that that fear of grave damage to national security upon learning that in February. The next killer moment, of course, are the tapes. And I don't want to go into too much detail about this, but I will say that that up to the attorney general level, there was sort of a, a, a jaw dropper of, oh, that's what's happening. Now we have no confidence that the materials that the FBI agents and the National Security Division prosecutors visited in June at Mar-a-Lago we have no confidence that that's the totality of the records uh, in this storage closet underneath, you know, the beautiful foyer and shrimp serving area of, of the Mar-a-Lago Club. Those are the two kind of pivotal moments of we've got to get a hold on national security and potential grave damage to it. And now we have evidence that it appears someone and most likely the former president is trying to keep us from getting everything. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm so glad that Carol brought it back to the, the national security implications of this, because I think we get lost in, you know, Eileen Cannon as, you know, Carrie Lake-ish, or Eileen Cannon as a real, you know, we, we get lost in what's happening in front of us. Um, and one of the advantages of, of stepping away for a minute is, you, you, you know, someone says Mar-a-Lago and you think, oh my God, stars on the wall. You think Sue Gordon. You think people died to get a scrap of evidence or a scrap of evidence 
from another country's intelligence professional to share with our government with the trust that it won't be tossed in a box. And it wasn't just with other documents. It was with his underwear, so said Trump. Mm-hmm. The, the disdain for the documents and everyone and everything and every life risk to, to gather them is always stunning to me when we come back to this one. When you think about what the election was about in terms of empathy um, being displayed by then, you know, candidate Biden and the lack of empathy with respect to Trump, um, it wasn't just sort of abstract uh, principles that were being talked about or even with respect to just how they deal with people. Um, That lack of understanding um, what your obligation is aside from yourself is what leads somebody to not take classified information seriously. I'm not talking about making a mistake. That could be said about Mike Pence, Joe Biden. Yeah, I mean, and that's what Jack Smith talks about. This is not inadvertent. This is not um, willful but not malicious. This is something in a next level. Exactly, because it was over and over and over again. There was no question that it was intentional for months and months, and then on top of that, obstruction. Um, And so that lack of empathy is something that leads to this danger to national security. And I think that in terms of the reason for why you saw this extraordinary step is precisely because if anybody in the White House or um, the executive branch would be thinking our obligation to the public Mm -hmm. is to recover this. Um, you know, and it doesn't matter if we're going to get criticized for it. You, we have an obligation mm-hmm. to the safety of the country.